Welcome to Analytical Chemistry Vision, a platform dedicated to exploring the theoretical and experimental aspects of chemistry, blending classroom learning with laboratory research to enhance understanding and inspire innovation in chemical science. In this lecture series, we'll explore the exciting world of analytical chemistry, combining theoretical learning with practical laboratory experience. You'll discover how chemical substances are identified and quantified accurately using both classical and modern instrumental methods. Analytical chemistry plays a central role in science by providing tools to understand the composition and structure of matter. This lecture is designed for UG, PG, and research scholars to strengthen conceptual understanding, ensure measurement reliability, and enhance critical thinking skills required for accurate, precise, and reproducible analytical results in various scientific applications. In this first part of the Analytical Chemistry Introduction section consists of what is analytical chemistry, qualitative and quantitative analysis, classification of analytical methods, factors affecting the choice of analytical method or steps in selection of method, and finally we will see the scope of analytical chemistry. Let us start another interesting and highly useful topic. Analytical chemistry is the branch of chemistry that involves the chemical characterization of matter, both qualitatively to identify the components present and quantitatively determine the amounts of substance present in unknown sample. It aims to obtain precise and reliable information about the composition, structure, and concentration of matter using a variety of classical and instrumental methods. Here, we will see how the qualitative analysis helps the characterization of materials, as the qualitative analysis provides information about the identity of species or functional groups, nitrate, sulfate, phosphate, etc. in the sample. Examples The presence or absence of sulfate, nitrate, hardness, iron, copper and pesticide in drinking water. The presence or absence of carbohydrate, protein, fats, alcohol, amino acids in food samples, which is tested by classical or instrumental methods. Next, we will see what is quantitative analysis and how useful in chemical analysis. Quantitative analysis provides the numerical information about the exact amount or concentration of chemical substance in sample. Examples measurement of glucose in blood sample is 99 mg per deciliter using glucometer. Hardness in tap water is 250 mg per liter using complexometric titration. The protein present in soybean is 36 to 40 percentage by Jeldal method. Here, analytical chemistry is broadly divided into two main branches, classical methods and instrumental methods. Classical methods include traditional techniques such as volumetric titration, which involves the known strength of known volume of solution reacts with unknown substance, and in gravimetric analysis, which rely on weight measurements to determine composition. Instrumental methods, on the other hand, use advanced instruments to identify and quantify chemical species. These methods are further categorized into several major types. First, spectroscopy, which includes molecular and atomic spectroscopy. Molecular spectroscopy involves methods like UV-visible, infrared, R, nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, electron spin resonance, Raman, and luminescence spectroscopy. Atomic spectroscopy includes atomic absorption spectroscopy, AS, flame photometry or inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy, ICPAES, and X-ray fluorescence, XRF. In these spectroscopy, the electromagnetic radiation interacts with matter, useful for composition and structural characterization. Next is chromatography, used for separation and purification of mixtures. Common techniques include thin layer chromatography, TLC, liquid chromatography, LC, gas chromatography, GC, iron chromatography, IC, and size exclusion chromatography, SEC. Mass spectrometry methods such as chemical ionization, CI, Fast Atom Bombardment, FAB, Electrospray Ionization, IC, and Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption, Ionization, MALDI, are used to identify molecular masses and structures. Electron and Microscopy Analysis Techniques include Scanning Tunneling Microscope, STM, Atomic Force Microscope, AFM, Scanning Electron Microscope, SAME, Transmission Electron Microscope, TEM, X-ray Photoelectron Spectroscopy, XPS, and X-ray diffraction, XRD, providing surface and structural information at the atomic level. Thermal analysis methods such as thermogravimetric analysis, TGA, differential thermal analysis, DTA, 
and differential scanning calorimetry DSC, are used to study material behavior with temperature changes. Finally, electroanalytical methods like cyclic voltammetry, CV, potentiometry, and coulometry analyze chemical reactions using electrical measurements. Together, these methods form the foundation of modern analytical chemistry, enabling precise identification and quantification of chemical substances across research and industry. Let's discuss the factors affecting the choice of an analytical methods or steps in analytical chemistry. First, the nature of the sample, whether it is solid, liquid, or gas, determines the suitable analytical method. Next, the concentration of the analyte plays a role. Trace components require highly sensitive techniques, while major components can be analyzed by simpler methods. The accuracy and precision required also guide the choice. High precision work needs more advanced instruments and calibration. Time and cost are practical factors, rapid and economical methods are preferred when resources are limited. Interference from other components in the sample may affect accuracy, so methods with minimal interference are chosen. Finally, the skill of the analyst influences the technique selection, complex instruments require experienced operators. First, we will see, nature of the sample solid, liquid, or gas. The nature of the sample is a crucial factor in selecting an appropriate analytical method. Samples can exist as solids, liquids, or gases, and each form requires different handling, preparation, and analytical techniques. Example, first, solid samples may need dissolution, digestion, or pulverization before analysis. Second, liquids can often be analyzed directly or after dilution. Third, gaseous samples may require collection in specialized containers or trapping before measurement. Second one is, concentration of analyte trace or major component. The concentration of the analyte plays a crucial role in selecting an appropriate analytical method. When the analyte, substance, is present in trace amounts, low, highly sensitive and selective techniques such as atomic absorption spectroscopy, AAS, F or inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, ICPMS, are preferred to detect very low concentration. Conversely, when the analyte is a major component, simpler and less sensitive methods such as titration, gravimetry, or UV visible spectrophotometry is used. Third one is, accuracy and precision required, where accuracy is the closeness of measured value with the, true value. We can express accuracy as an absolute error and relative error. The result of one method is compared with result of other standard method for determination of particular chemical substance. Example, iron in drinking water using UV visible spect photometry, measured value, can be compared with the result of atomic absorption spectrometry, true value, and accuracy can be determined, how close the true value with measure value. Here, we know how to determine accuracy in analytical measurements. There are two main ways to check accuracy, absolute error and relative error. Let's start with absolute error. It is the difference between the measured value, xi and the true value, xt the formula is, ea equals the absolute value of xi minus xt. Let's understand with examples. Example 1. If the true weight of a body is 100 grams, and the measured value is 99.5 grams, then the absolute error is the difference between 199.5 to which equals 0.5 grams. Example 2. If the true concentration of protein in a biscuit is 5.5%, and the measured value using the Jaildal method is 5.2%, then the absolute error equals the difference between 5.5 and 5.2, that is 0.3%. In summary, absolute error tells us how close our measured result is to the true value, helping us evaluate the accuracy of our analysis. Another one is relative error, ER which is equal to XI minus XT divided by XT, multiply by 100 percentage. Where XI is measured value, XT is true value. Please see the examples of relative error here. First examples is, if a true weight of body is 100 gram and the measured value is 99.5 gram. ER is equal to 100 minus 99.5 divided by 100 and multiply by 100, which equal to 0.5 percentage. Second one is, if the true concentration of protein in biscuit is 5.5 percentage and measured value with Geldal method is 5.2. ER equal to 5.5 minus 5.2 divided by 5.5 and multiply with 100 percentage, which equal to 5.45 percentage. 
Third one is, true glucose concentration in blood is 10 mg and measured value is 9.7 mg. ER equal to 10 minus 9.7 divided by 10 and then multiply by with 100, which equal to 3 percentage. Thus, relative error expresses accuracy as a percentage of the true value. It helps compare measurement reliability and shows how close experimental results are to expected values. Next, precision is another important parameter in analytical measurements. Precision refers to the closeness of repeated measurements of the same sample under identical conditions. It shows the reproducibility or consistency of analytical results. Several factors affect precision, including the analyst skill, instrument stability, sample homogeneity, and environmental conditions such as temperature and humidity. Let's understand with an example. Iron in drinking water is determined five times using UV visible spectrophotometry. The measured values are 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0.5 mg, respectively. These closely grouped results show that the method is precise, even if the actual value might differ slightly from the true one. Precision focuses on repeatability, not necessarily on correctness. Then, here we learn how the precision can be determined or it can be expressed quantitatively. There are two ways by which it can be expressed. First one is standard deviation, SD, and another one is relative standard deviation or coefficient of variation, CV. The formula for standard deviation is square root of summation of xi minus x bar, bracket of, power 2, divided by n minus 1. Where SD is standard deviation, xi, is individual measurement, x bar is mean value, and n is number of observation. Similarly, relative standard deviation, RSD can be calculated from the standard deviation which is equal to SD divided by mean value, X bar, multiply by 100 percentage, where SD is standard deviation, X bar is mean value, N is number of observation. Now here we understand the difference between accuracy and precision. On the image, first, we see a graph that represents the distribution of measured values compared to the true value. Accuracy refers to how close a measured value is to the true or accepted value. Precision, on the other hand, indicates how close repeated measurements are to each other, regardless of whether they are close to the true value. Now, look at the four target diagrams second. In the A, the measurements are close to the center overall but spread out, this shows high accuracy and low precision. In the B, all the points are tightly grouped near the center, this represents high accuracy and high precision, which is ideal. In the C, the points are scattered and far from the center, this shows low accuracy and low precision. Finally, in the D, the points are closely grouped but away from the center, meaning low accuracy but high precision. In summary, accuracy means closeness to the true value, while precision means consistency among measurements. For reliable analytical results, both accuracy and precision are essential. Fourth factor that affect the analytical measurement is time and cost. Time and cost involved in an analysis depend on the complexity of the method, type of sample, and accuracy required. Simple colorimetric or volumetric titration analyses may take less time and use inexpensive reagents. Advanced techniques like HPLC, GC, or IR, NMR spectroscopic methods require costly instruments and longer preparation time. Labor, maintenance, and calibration also add to the total cost. Faster methods may sometimes compromise precision or sensitivity but the cost is high. Selecting an analytical technique involves balancing time, cost, and the desired quality of results. Fifth factor is interference from other components that may also affect the chemical analyses. Interference is substances that present in sample other than target analyte, and which may affect accuracy and reliability of results. Methods such as separation techniques, chromatography, solvent extraction, masking agents, or selective reagents are often employed to minimize these effects. The extent of interference determines whether a direct method can be used if prior sample preparation and purification are necessary to isolate the analyte for accurate and precise determination. Finally, we will see the skill of the analyst and its impact on analytical results. Methods relying on instrumentation are equipment intensive and may require significant operator training. For example, the graphite furnace atomic absorption spectroscopy, GFAAS, 
method for determination of metal icons such lead, copper, cadmium, arsenic, etc. in soil samples requires a significant experienced operator to obtain reliable results. On contrary, other methods, such as titration, require less expensive equipment and less training. Here, we will know how the analytical chemistry can be used in different branch of scientific studies such as chemistry, biology, geology, environmental science, agriculture, social science, material science, medicine, engineering, and physics. Thus, in summary for learning this topic provides a strong foundation in analytical chemistry by helping students understand the sources, types, and control of errors in measurements. It enhances critical thinking, improves data reliability, and builds confidence in interpreting experimental results, which is essential for conducting accurate, precise, and reproducible scientific analyses. Thank you for watching the Analytical Chemistry Vision. Next part of Analytical Chemistry, Part 2, we will learn the different types of errors, systematic and random errors and third part of Analytical Chemistry we will learn the use of statistics such mean, median, average deviation, standard deviation, relative standard deviation, F-test, student T-test with examples in chemical measurements. If you like this video, please visit our channel for more interesting theoretical and experimental lectures. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and share your feedback in the comments to help us improve further. Thank you.